or three times a week, forensic pathologist Michal Tsokos has to visit a crime scene, just like on TV. Or is it? In some ways, it's just like on TV, where you always see the forensic pathologist at the scene of the crime. But obviously, we can't just touch a body and establish a time of death. We need our equipment, and we need to examine the body thoroughly. But work at the crime scene does play a major role in forensic pathology. In Berlin, all cases of death by unnatural causes are referred to the Institute for Pathology at the Charité, and Michal Tsokos is its director. He isn't just the best-known forensic pathologist in Germany, he's also a best-selling author. Tsokos has written a book about unusual cases that forensic scientists have solved. In it, he also clears up some popular misconceptions about his job. The three main misconceptions people have about forensic pathologists because of all the TV shows are that we're pathologists. A pathologist and a forensic pathologist have about as much in common as an ophthalmologist and a gynecologist, which is that they both studied medicine. The second misconception is that corpses are identified by family members in the institute. We actually never see the family members. And the third misconception is that we walk around all the time toting a gun and arresting suspects. Forensic pathologists are scientists. Their workplace is the autopsy room. Michael Tsokos and his colleagues carry out some 2,000 post-mortem examinations a year. The forensic pathology department at the Charité is the biggest in Germany. But Tsokos says that, in fact, relatively few autopsies are conducted in Germany. A post-mortem examination is carried out on just 5% of those who die, compared to 20% in Scandinavia. That means that many crimes in Germany go unnoticed. Exactly how many is unknown. Tsokos has been doing this work for 15 years. Is it possible to get used to it? I can't forget what I see, but it's not as though it lurks in my subconscious and suddenly overwhelms me. I don't take my work home with me. I don't dream about it. Obviously, I remember what I've seen, but I can put it in a scientific context. Autopsy samples such as blood and tissue are examined at the Institute using state-of-the-art techniques. The forensic pathologists can establish whether the person they're examining committed suicide or was murdered, and if so, how. In Germany, most murders occur through stabbings, rarely through shootings. In the U.S., most murders are shootings, whereas in Asia, especially in India, death by poison is most common, using agricultural pesticides or insecticides. Examining the bodies of murder victims is just part of the forensic pathologist's job. Another is identifying corpses. After the 2004 tsunami, the German government sent him to Thailand to help identify victims, usually through characteristics involving teeth or hair. Aren't horrific experiences like these unbearable? Well, I can stand it. The obvious question is, is there anything I couldn't bear? I couldn't bear seeing children dying of cancer. Seeing my patients die would be unbearable. But I do think it's important to be professional and to take up the challenge involved in identifying individuals in a mass of corpses, the challenge of the unknown. Sokos confronts death every day. Whether he's dealing with suicides or murder victims, his work forces him to plumb the depths of the human soul. How does that affect him? I think it makes my life very intense. I enjoy the time I spend with my family much more. But it hasn't changed my view of society. It hasn't turned me into a misanthropist who believes society is rotten to its core. Definitely not that. Forensic pathology, a job that brings new challenges every day.